I bought one of these um, TE coolers, these Peltier coolers. Now this one's a TEC1 127-15. So um, the 127, I think, is the area of this thing's like 40 millimeters by 40. Yeah, so that doesn't make sense. Anyway, 127 is like a model number, and then 15 is how many amps does it take. So this this will take 15 amps. It's a 12 volt device. 12 doesn't stand for 12, but um, it is a 15 amp device. And uh, I have it on a heat sink because one side gets really, really hot, the other side gets really, really cold. And I have a, a 12 volt fan underneath, so 12 volts runs the, uh, the Peltier Plus runs the fan at the same time. And I have a uh, uh, 12 volt, 12 volt power supply. I think it's uh, 15 amp. Yeah, 15 amps. So 12 volt, 15 amps. I got that. So I, I've hooked this up, and and this thing gets really, really cold. It makes ice. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, but I wanted to be able to regulate it so I could set a particular temperature here. So you can get uh, temperature regulators, or I don't know what they're called, but kind of a thermos, thermostat type stuff. So I had, I had this one in my, in my pile of stuff. And I thought, oh great, I can finally use that thing. I've been hanging on to it for a couple of years. It, you can see that it's pretty, it's pretty old. Um, and so the way these work is that it has a connection for uh, the AC. So you actually put 110 volts into this thing and it powers up. And then there's a relay. Um, and then there's a place for a thermocouple. So it monitors the temperature someplace, and it does one of those, um, oh, what are those things? That's a closed loop, predictive closed loop. Oh, it'll come to me anyway. It runs into a, a predictive algorithm, and it uh, sets on the front panel. You set whatever temperature you want. It'll read the current temperature and the temperature you want to set, and it'll, it'll get there. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll use this. Uh, unfortunately, this only heats. It won't cool. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe I could put an inverting amplifier on it or something, but no, it only, it only heats. So uh, I went to eBay. I think I, I think this, I think I got this on eBay. Uh, I just came in the mail today. And so let's take off this cellophane so it won't be so glaring in the camera. And so, uh, as a display, has some buttons. It's got a uh, looks like it's got a built-in thermocouple. Uh, yeah, remote remote probe. So it's got a little thermocouple and a little metal metal thing here. And it is an ST. STC 1000 and it uh, has a little diagram on the side here. It, once again, it's 110 volts. Um, so power supply sensor, you hook up thermocouple on pins three and four. And then it has uh, one relay for heating and one relay for cooling. So this one's supposed to be able to do both. So that'll be cool. Let's see if we can open up the Open up the back here and see what's inside. Huh. I don't know. There's like little push tabs on the side. Oh, there you go. One side popped off. Oh, come on. And the other side will not come out. Hmm. Jeez. Oh. Okie dokie. That was easy. <laughs> Uh, so there's the terminal blocks, so 
three and four are on the little connector. And uh, we have terminal strips for the other things. And it doesn't look like it comes apart easy, so I won't show you the insides, but I'm sure it's one little microprocessor and a display. So, um, and instructions we get. Operating instructions. Temperature minus 50 to plus 99C. Resolution 0.1. That's funny. Storage temperature is less than the uh, measuring temperature. Um, cool indicator light says refrigeration starts. Oh, so there's two lights. A cool light and a hot light. Uh, cool and a heat. Okay. So, so it says if it's turning on the cooler or turning on the heater. So you can have it go both ways at the same time. And then set for the settings. Let's see here, it's inside, nothing. Backside, same thing. Okay, so I thought we'd finally hook it up. So uh, this thing is rated at Cooling, uh, 10 amps, wow, 220 at 10 amps, Woo. So we will run the AC right into this thing. We'll, we'll turn, on, turn on and off the AC to the power supply and then hook up the DC and we'll take the uh, thermal couple, we'll stick it here and see if we can't set a particular temperature, that'd be cool. Okay, we're going to do a quick test to make sure everything is uh, working as it did before. So we have uh, this hooked up. We have the, uh, there's two terminals for plus and two terminals for minus. And then there's AC in and uh, uh, earth ground. And so uh, one of these goes to the Peltier, one of them goes to the fan. So let's plug it in. Okay, I hear the fan. And already this thing is cold. <laughs> This thing gets cold really, 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 really fast. Wow. Wow, it is cold. Okay, so we know it works, so let's turn this off. All right, so what we're gonna do is, this is now gonna be a switch. So we need to have the AC going into here um, to power it up. And we also need to have the AC go through the relay uh, to this device. So figure out how to best way to wire that up. All right, have it wired up. Um, if you are still using wire nuts, you are missing out. You need to use these uh, Wago, W-A-G-O connectors. They come in uh, twos, threes, and fives. I think that's all. Um, they are wonderful. Just flip it, snap, snap. Um, they're great. Got to get those. There was an old style uh, this style, and I uh, didn't really like these styles very much, uh, but this new style is is the one to get. I think there's a Chinese copy too, but these are official Lego. All right, so we have the power coming in, so we have AC coming in. Uh, two of the wires go to here, so AC is powering this directly. And then one of the AC lines goes over to the power supply, and the other AC line routes through this relay and then back out. So I think you can figure that out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's turn it on and watch for the magic smoke. Uh, since it's 110 volts and there's exposed terminals, be really, really, really careful. Uh, let's see. All right. So it looks like it's working. And we're down a bit. It says uh, 24C. There's a power button. Maybe that's just operate. Anyway, it says cool, flashing. Hmm. Okay, 
So set. Maybe we'll hold down the set. There we go. F1. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, F2. I don't know. F1. 10C. Uh, so let's, let's see. Instead of 10C, let's 3C. 10C and 3C. Uh oh. Maybe I better read the instructions. All right. I managed to get it going. Um, kind of a strange menu system. But uh, I have the uh, thermocouple under here. I just have a, a weight on it to hold it on the top. So the wire is just acting as a weight. Um, and I have, it, uh, I have it set to 20C. So it should hold it at 20C. So it's uh, gone over. Now it's at 14C, 13.7. You hear it turn off, so it stopped the cooling. So PID controller was what I was trying to think of. PID controller. I think this is probably a PID. Yeah, see, so it turned it on a little bit before it got to 20 because it knew it was ramping up. So here it's running and now it's starting to cool. There, it's going back up again. That turned it on before we got there. So I have it set to... Um, I get turned off again. So the way that you operate this thing, let's see, let me... Let me see if I can zoom in here a bit. Oh, that's good. All right. So you have to hold the S button in and F1 is the uh, temperature that you want. And it timed out. So we'll hit S. Then we'll hit S again. And 17.6 is the temperature. Oh, hmm. I guess I messed it up. So we'll go to, we'll hold. We'll go to S, we'll go to 17.6. Now we'll hit all these buttons down. And now we can set the temperature we want. Can you see that? You have to keep holding the S button down. There. Now, it should be set to 20. So we hold, hold the S in, F1, and set to 20. Okay, good. So, the, so let me say that again. You hold the S button in, and then you get to F1, which is the temperature you want to set. You hit S, up arrow, and down arrow all at the same time, and that gets you into rolling. It starts to count, and then you can keep the S button down, and then you can use the up, down arrows to set it correctly. So I have it set at 20. So if I hold the S button down, and I go to, I arrow up to F2, and I push the button, I have it set to half a volt, a half a volt, half a, half a degree. So that's the, that's the error band. I want it within plus or minus half a degree, so if it goes more or less than half a degree, the PID controller should fire. Okay, so we're going to hold it in again. Go to F3. F3 is what's called compressor timeout. So if this is controlling some type of Freon system, you don't want to have it cycle like this all the time. You want to have some te de te dead zone. And so you can set it between 1 and 10 minutes. Um, so that the controller won't touch it for one to 10 minutes and then it'll start up again. There is a, uh, a zero value though. So I have it set to the zero value, which says uh, don't delay, just do it, do it every time. And then uh, if you go to F4, this is a calibration. So if your temperature seems to be plus or minus, you can put in a cal factor there and, and fudge it. Now, let's see if our F1 stayed set. Yeah, it's still at 20C. All right, so. so it seems to be bopping up and down. Uh, I guess you can't go in and change the PID settings, so it is what it is. It's not as good as I would have hoped. Maybe it'll learn over time. Maybe I'll let it run for a while and see if it learns. Um, but uh, it seems to be pretty crude right now. But it does work. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh <laughs> I know what that one was. Um, so, uh, over here, over there, I have the cord plugged into a 30-minute timer. That's what I use for my desoldering tool, make sure I don't leave anything on. 
I'd plugged it into there, so I've been fiddling with this thing for 30 minutes and it decided to turn off. So probably okay because I think dinner's ready. So oh well. So if you're thinking about this, this isn't the greatest controller. This is an STC 1000. Doesn't seem to be the greatest, uh, but it is cheap, uh, really cheap. So I've modified my setup. I've added an aluminum block that adds as a mass, a heat mass uh, that slows down the heating and cooling. It uh, dampens the, uh, the whole thing. So the thermocouple is shoved up inside of it. There's a hole inside and the thermocouple's inside of it. So once it's to temperature, it's gonna hold its, it's, gonna hold its temperature. It won't fluctuate as wildly. And I uh, changed the uh, parameter to 10 degrees uh, Celsius. I also changed one parameter, which is the, uh, the error function, uh, how far away from the set temperature before you turn the Rayleigh back on. And I've gone down to 0.2 degrees. Um, so if it varies more than plus or minus 0.2 degrees, it will do something. So you can see that uh, it's, it's reached its 10 degrees. Um, and it overshoots a little bit, but, but not a lot now because um, of the uh, heat, 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 uh, heat mass that I've, uh, ha that I've applied. You can see this also says, ah, a little bit off here, I'll go, I'll go to heating mode. So it is doing what it's supposed to do. So now when this comes back up to 10.2, uh, it should turn back on again. It should go into its cool cycle, which it did. So it's holding the temperature into a, a much narrower window now. So having a thermal mass, um, is, uh, is really helping the situation.